Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. I'm Nina Takish. Today, stepping out of the Red Elevator and guess where we're going? This is a non-sponsored video where my entire face is going to be transformed by none other than Monica Blunder, makeup artist to the stars. From Jen Garner, Megan Fox, Gemma Chen, you name it, she is hot and I cannot wait to show you what this face can look like. Follow me. So we are at Monica. Hello, Monica. I love Hi, you so much. Nina. So Monica Blunder, the famous, I cannot believe this incredible makeup artist is going to be doing my makeup today. I have to go out after this, like somewhere really glamorous, like the Oscars or something. But uh, Monica, as I mentioned, is makeup artist to the stars and is going to be doing my makeup today. And she's going to teach us some really interesting techniques that I need to learn, especially for my everyday routine. Uh, Monica, tell me, what, well, what, what are you thinking about me and my face and everything else? And thank so... you for inviting us into your beautiful oh, home. Of course, you're so beautiful inside and out and you're so charming and I feel like you don't need a lot of makeup. I, I love women to look, you know, kind of like themselves, just in a better version. So I like to teach you how you can do your makeup for your everyday life and your profession. You're very professional. You have an amazing job, you're an interior designer. You need to look good in front of all your clients, but I wanna teach you how to do it quick, efficient, with some really good product. So let's get into the video. I can't wait to see what you're gonna do. Okay. And I wanna learn. I always thought I was so good at makeup, but I don't think, I'm, I know I'm not as good as you are and I always want to learn more well, if things. if you would be as good as I would be, I would be out of a job. But <laughs> thank God you're not as good as I am. But I am going to start with skincare because I think skincare is something that a lot of women forget how important it is, especially when you apply makeup afterwards. Uh, you know, I, I know some women, they just put their foundation on dry skin and mm. I'm like, how can you do this? Because it won't move as well. So make sure you spend at least, you know, a good amount, like two minutes on your skincare. I am a huge fan of serums and moisturizer. The combination uh, works beautiful. We want to create this gorgeous glow on you. So I'm using this product on you today, which is one of my favorites. It's by Clé de Peau. It's the firming serum. And I like to say that the serum is almost like, you know, when you're wearing Spanx and it sucks everything in. I need that. That is the same Will that work on face. my booty too? Yeah, it's the same <laughs> for your face. So when you apply this, it just like really gives you that like nice firmness in your skin. Ooh, wow. I honestly feel like it's like quenching. Not only is it quenching my face, but it's like tightening, tightening it. Yeah, it's really nice. Do you use this for the A-list, A-listers? I, I use this for a lot of my clients, yeah. As a base, before you get into the makeup? Yes, and then any moisturizer will do. I'm using another Clinipo product. I love this guy right here. It's the Supreme Volumizing Moisturizer. I just wanna like get you really nice and juicy. So afterwards, when we apply the blender cover, my product, it just sort of all melts together. So congratulations on having your products at Neiman Marcus. Amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. It's such a great space to be in. We're also going to be at Nordstrom's. Nordstrom's, soon. wonderful. So everyone's going to have access to Blender products, Blender Beauty. This is my product that I launched exactly a year ago today in December, and it's a hybrid foundation concealer. This is brand new this year. I just picked the right shade for Nina. She's 3.5, and I'm going to apply that. I have actually first launched with one brush. Now I have a new one, which is a buffing brush. So I'm going to show you how to use both brushes. So I like to just sort of like go in with my brush, open up and start. I always start in the center of the face and work my way outwards. And as you can see, because we prepped her skin so nicely before, this product literally just glides onto her skin now. And I think foundation in general is such a fine line. I created this product because I am 
pretty well known in Hollywood for the way how I create someone's skin. I like when you have flawless skin, but I also don't like when you look at someone and you can see the foundation. So I wanted to create a product that is very skin-like. So it was really important for me that it looks like your own skin when you're applying it. Now, the buffer brush, this here is called Call Your Buff Brush, is really great for when you like wanna apply the product really quickly. So you can also use that brush for buffing. I like to use the smaller brush first, so because I can be a bit more precise with it. And then I go in with the buffer to kind of like buff it all out, as you can see. And I created all these brushes so you can use them for other things as well. Like I, I'm all about multitasking and using things multiple ways. So I'm gonna show you later on that you can use those brushes for powder, cream products, contouring, so many different ways. So now I can perfect it without the camera. Now, as you can see, I have a bit of melasma because I had Morpheus 8 done on my face, which is basically a um, radio frequency and it just made my melasma worse. Is this able to cover it up? Absolutely. This is great for melasma because as you can see, it's a pretty thick base. So you can manipulate it your own way and you can do so many things. You can use it in a very thin layer. You can just use it as a concealer or you can pinpoint. And then I have another brush, which I just came out with, this little guy right here called the Tulip Brush. And what this brush does, what we call in the makeup artist world, we call it pinpoint concealing. So if you have little target areas such as melasma or breakouts or dark spots, you can go in with the fine smaller brush and tackle those areas and just cover it that now, way. Now why do people use sponges versus brushes? What's the difference really? I mean, I like a sponge too. A sponge is really quick and fast. So if you, it's really good for liquid products. If you have liquid foundations and you want to apply it all over your face really quickly, a sponge is really great. Oh, but I like, I like a brush. I'm a brush girl. So I'm going to do just a thin layer now, and then I'm going to come back to the skin later. Now I'm also going to put it over her eyelids, almost to prime her eyes before I do my eye makeup. And then instead of using using a primer, I just use that and a powder and it's a really nice base before the eyeshadow. Now I just moved on to her brows. I saw Nina earlier, she had her brows on and I felt like she did a little bit too much on her brows. I want to like teach her to bring it down a notch and to make them look a little softer. What I'm doing is I'm really just like looking at her shape because she has beautiful brows just by itself. So I'm really, instead of just filling them in everywhere because a lot of times women fill too much and actually eyebrows can make you look older if you make them look too harsh. I feel like she doesn't really need anything in the front. I'm just bringing in a little bit more shape right in here where I feel like she needs a little bit more and I also just dragged it outwards a little bit more so I'm really focusing like right in here and on the outer tip another really good tip is what I see a lot of women they do their brow and they go downwards we don't want anything to ever go down we want everything to go up now with brows obviously they can go up but like with brows go more straight out so they don't go downwards so that is about the right amount, I think, for daytime, that I think her brows look very groomed, they frame her face and they look great. Okay, now I'm just going to go in, especially because, again, this is daytime and, you know, she's a woman on the go with not so much time to do her makeup. And I think a brow gel is really great because it just kind of holds everything in place and you can do that quick. You don't need to have a lot, lot of knowledge on how to do your brows, but they, they look very groomed and put together. So I always recommend a brow gel. So I'm gonna start by using a pencil. This guy here is by Sisley. And I love these types of chubby pencils because they are, again, easy to use, very effective. You can work with them very quickly. And I love how forgiving they are on the eye. So you don't have to be like a pro or professional. I'm just sort of like starting the base with this product. And I love that it is cream based. So it's almost like you're putting the base down and then I go in with shadow. And uh, I like to combine different textures. 
it's the same in probably in your field as a designer you know it's all about textures in the face and that's what I'm always trying to teach people you don't want to have everything looking matte you want to bring in different you know different textures and as you can see you can literally just use your fingers with this eye pencil and it just creates like a really nice shape and color and then I go in with the Dior this is a single shadow in the color 658 and I use like a fluffier brush for this and I'm just applying this over the shadow or over the cream shadow just for a little bit of shimmer another thing I like to do is instead of using so many different eye products I'm a huge fan of bronzers especially matte bronzers with not too much shimmer so especially this color right here I love in the socket of the eye just to create a little bit more of dimension in the eye so I just bring that into the socket and what that does it just creates almost like an, an illusion and it makes the eye look appear larger I'm gonna also go in with that same pencil we used earlier on the eyelid and I'm gonna bring that on the lower lash line also for a little bit of dimension I'm a huge fan of putting black or dark brown in the waterline in the upper waterline the waterline is the inside of the eye so instead of putting a harsh line which you use a lot of black liners which is probably just something that's the only thing you kind of I'm probably used, to, used yeah. to and everything so I love putting the black in the inside so if you close your eye gentle I'm gonna lift this up and I go like right in that waterline in between the lashes. And what this does is it just gives you a thicker lash line. So if you look between here and here, it doesn't even look harsh. It doesn't look, it, no one really knows that I actually used makeup, but it's an illusion again and it just makes it look thicker and fuller. Now I'm gonna use a liner on top of her lash line and instead of doing what she normally does is black liner I'm using a bronze liner and this one here is by Marc Jacobs I'm gonna do a little extra today because I want to have you guys have like a wow factor I don't think you need to do the lashes during the day every day but you're going out tonight and you want a little bit more so right now you could just put mascara on you're good to go but I'm gonna do these half lashes which I use on literally every single one of my clients everyone loves them they're comfortable they're easy to apply they're not a full strip and a lot of women are afraid of strips because they think it looks very heavy but the half one the 318 is my secret weapon right so now the lashes had a minute to dry and then i go in with mascara i'm gonna first start with my nars Climax mascara. I'm gonna go as close. Yeah, and it's almost like if you blink is actually helping me I go as close as I can to the root of the lash and now especially the front it like all looks very cohesive together I'm gonna put a little bit more blender cover underneath the eyes and blender cover is enough for during the day if you just want a little bit concealing but sometimes I layer it with a little bit more concealer. And for that, I'm gonna bring in my NARS custard just for a little extra double layer. I like to kind of finish the skin now after the eyes are done. And the reason why is when you do eye makeup, a lot of times you have fall down from the shadow or you know, you make little mistakes and so it's always good to kind of like do the last steps after your eye makeup. You know, I bring back that buffer brush just to kind of like make it all look super even. You drag it down because you don't want to stop it right here. You want to have a seamless transition going down to the neck. Very important. Those steps are many women forget because they're in a rush and all these little details make the makeup look better or stand out you know it's like blending don't don't skip that part or don't rush that part so one of my favorite things is to contour and I contour very gentle I'm not someone where you you know I don't like when you see the contour I like to do it very naturally you can also and I love contouring with blender cover so you just use a darker shade one of my favorite contour shades is five or six is another really good one. And uh, I love using my new brush, the Call Your Buff brush, 
So can you see how the brush has like this nice angle? And I pick up my darker shade with the angle part of the brush right here. And then I'm gonna go in and just bring that darker shade right underneath her cheekbones. I also like to bring it and see how I'm just touching it with that angled part of the brush. And that's the reason why I designed it that way. So it's really easy for contour. And that will bring out her cheekbones. It'll give her more definition in her face. And I like to also do it a little bit on the forehead because I don't like to just put the contour here because then it, it's too noticeable. I bring it a little bit on the forehead and I also like to bring it right in here. And then what you do is now you turn the brush flat and now you use that flat part of the brush for the buffing. So see how like seamlessly it just glides into the skin. Now I'm gonna go in with some of my, I'm not a big powder person. I'm not a huge fan of powder, especially women after a certain age. Powder can be very aging as well. I also don't like when the face looks too dry, too powdered. So I, I do it very gentle. I use a nice fluffy brush because the fluffier the brush, the less product it picks up. And I, I like to just kind of like set the concealer we used underneath the eyes and I bring it a little bit in the hot spots of the face. So meaning the T-zone and the chin and around the lip. And I like to keep the rest of the face really nice and luminous and glowy. So now after we have powdered, now is the step when I go in and do the underneath mascara because now it won't touch the skin anymore and it's all prepped for the mascara. And I think that's the mistake many people do as well, that do the mascara too early. So now I'm gonna go in with my MAC Extended Play Lash, my favorite mascara for lower lashes. Lower mascara is amazing what it does on her. It, it really works well on her. Not everyone can do lower mascara, but for you, I think it's, it's a very nice touch. I'm just gonna use some Q-tip and some micellar water. This one is by Kogan Do, but Bioderma works really well as well. I'm just gonna put this on a Q-tip. And then I just go back in with a smaller brush, a little blender cover, and it's all fixed. Now I'm gonna use the same bronzer we used earlier for her socket line. I'm just gonna use it on a nice fluffy brush. Just add a little bit more of that bronzer over the contour. I'm gonna use one of my new products. This is coming out very soon after this video airs. So I'm very excited. It's a cream blush. It's actually a liquid blush. So see how it's almost like, it looks like a cream. And I love this color so much. So I'm really excited to show you. And I'm using my Call You Buff brush to apply it. And again, if you feel like it's too much, you go in with your smaller brush. Kind of just blend it all out. Okay, now I'm gonna use a little bit of this highlighter right here from Tom Ford. It's like an, a palette I have, I really love. I'm gonna just use that. I'm gonna bring a little bit of that color from my palette, from this Tom Ford palette. I'm just gonna bring that a little bit underneath her eyes. It kind of matches. It's sort of like in that same color family than the liner we used on top. All right, we're almost done, and now we're gonna go to the lips. I'm a huge lip liner fan, huge, huge, huge. I think every woman should use a liner because it just gives you definition. You don't need to line your whole lip, but my favorite part to line is the Cupid's bow right in here, just a little bit over your lip, just to get that pout, and it gives you that instant lift. And I also like to line a little bit on the bottom right here just to get that pout going and then I'm gonna go in with a new product I've never used this but it looks so pretty it's by Bobbi Brown and I feel like it's exactly the same color than your lips and uh, maybe a little bit darker but I think that this color will be stunning on you for like an everyday kind of natural lip a lot of people always ask me how to choose the lipstick and I think this is a perfect example right here is that I chose a color that is in Nina's lip family, you know. When you look at her natural lips, she does have a kind of peachy undertone and I kind of picked that up and just enhanced it a little bit. But this makeup today, like your eyes are the focal point, so we're letting the eyes shine. 
and we'll just do a natural lip. Then the next thing we're gonna do, the last thing, just for a little bit of gloss, I think it would be perfect how it is right now. I love it just alone, but we'll do a little extra. I'm gonna use the Tom Ford Sunrise Pink Lip Gloss. Love the packaging, it's so luxe feeling just like Nina is. <laughs> so we need a little luxe liner for her. And uh, très chic, Nina. Très chic. De, très chic. Très Mademoiselle, chic. très chic. <laughs> so she'll get a little bit of that gloss on top. And I like to put the gloss more towards the middle. I'm not someone, you don't always have to line your whole lip with it. I kind of just pop it sort of like in the middle of her lip. Wow, I feel so glamorous. This looks insane. Monica, now I know why you are the makeup artist. I mean, I always knew, but you, this is, I've never seen myself look like, it's amazing. You look so good. Thank you. You always wonder what it would be like to have a professional do your makeup. I always have, always wondered. Because she's gonna be out all night tonight. So another nice thing is you can layer your blush with a cream blush. So that's something I love to do is first put the cream on. And now I'm just adding a little bit more blush because I think blush looks so good on you, Nina. Thank and you. doing another NARS product orgasm. Monica, I can't thank you enough for creating this incredible makeup tutorial. I know that everyone is always asking, how do you do your makeup? How do you do your makeup? And finally, we're able to show them the really, the professional, gorgeous tricks of the trade. What do you think? Do you think, uh, what's your what's your sentiment about? about uh, first I of all, I'm never that. wearing black, eye black liner again. I am doing the Monica everywhere. But what I, do you think? I love the black liner on you, but I just wanted to bring in something different to show you that you can wear your makeup also, you know, a little bit lighter, maybe with, you know, lighter colors, less makeup for during the day and quick and easy, you know, multi-functional products like eyes and, you know, cheek colors together, brushes, for different products so i hope that this was helpful for you that i taught you something and, a lot uh, a lot you taught <laughs> me a great deal i'm going to luckily i have this video to document this so that when i'm doing a special evening out i'm going to mimic everything that you did again i want to thank you for taking the time out of your very very busy schedule i know you're traveling you're doing all these different beautiful Hollywood people, but um, I feel special today. So thank you, I love you so much. So much and fun. Um, I had a lot of fun. If you guys love this tutorial, please leave a comment below as to what part of this makeup did you think was the most wow? Do you think it's the eyes? Is it, was it the lips? What did you learn? I'd love to hear what you have to say, Monica. I love you, thank you so much. Yay. And uh, thank again, you. thank you. So much fun, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode and we'll see you again next Sunday on the Red Elevator.